Welcome to the 2023 FIBA Women's Asia Cup in Sydney, Australia. It is the dominant force of China up against the promoted Lebanon who will be looking to stay in Division A. Joining me in commentary is coaching legend Laurie Chizik. And Laurie, a great honour for these two teams, for these players to represent their country today. Anytime you pull on your country's uh, jersey, you want to make sure that you're uh, doing the right thing out there, you're going hard, and I have no doubt both teams will represent their countries very well. And we look at the scores from earlier today. New Zealand winning a thriller against Korea, 66 to 64. And of course, coming up next is China up against Lebanon. But what a game we just witnessed, Laurie. That was fantastic. Well, it certainly was right down to the wire. Game one, day one, and uh, such a crucial game. But every game is crucial. China are certainly going to want to set the pace early in this game. And, and we know how dominant they are. But but Lebanon, you know, this is their first time in, in the A division in a number of years. And so they really want to make sure they take advantage of competing against some of the best teams in the world and learning and evolving. You saw the rankings up on the screen before. China ranked second and Lebanon ranked 44th in the world. Let's take a look at Lebanon now. As I mentioned, they won the Division B tournament in Jordan two years ago and therefore have been promoted to Division A. They've got a strong mix of players and led by their 2021 MVP, Rebecca Hakul, Laurie Chizik. Yeah, she was certainly dominant in that um, in that final in the Division B, and, and she will be somebody that they look to go to a lot in, in scoring, in defense. Um, but she has some other players to back her up, and, and those players, they, they really just need to... This needs to be done by committee, this team. They, they don't have any, you know, superstars the likes of, you know, Shu Han, but nevertheless, they've got some great players and they need to do it and play together well as a team. So Lebanon looking to get off to a great start. You can see Trinity Baddest running out onto the court, hoping to get off to a good start against China. It'll be a tough task for them, but they've shown they're up for the fight. As we mentioned, they've got not a host of superstars, but definitely a host of star players that can contribute to a big win. And you can see Ida Bajos rounding out the squad there at a nice jump to end it off. So Lebanon full of energy ahead of the clash against China today. We know the dominant force of China second in Asia Cup, but we're going to introduce them now. And you can hear the roar of the Chinese fans in Sydney, Australia. They came second in the Asia Cup in 2021, had a solid World Cup campaign, second in that one as well. And Laurie, they've just got so many weapons in their team. And I think you can add the crowd behind them as one of their weapons too. There's uh, always when they play, and certainly last year at the World Cup, that they're, they're passionate fans, they cheer on their team, and, and they'll be thrilled that they're here once again to, to show what they can do on the court. And they've brought a great team over, eight players from the World Cup, seven played at the Olympics, so they are a strong team. They certainly are ranked second up against Lebanon, ranked 44th. We're standing by for the national anthems of both Lebanon and China, and we'll head down courtside to listen to them both now. Would you please remain upstanding for the national anthem of China?
So a loud roar from fans of both teams. And you saw the crowd shots. We spoke about the crowd of China, but you cannot discount the crowd of Lebanon as well. They've got plenty of support in the house in Sydney today. You can see both teams converging in the middle of the court. And don't they have a big job on their hands? The referees today, Jacqueline Dover, Saif al Dosari, and Jonard Garcia are the ones officiating the game today. So a big task on their hands, but I'm sure it'll be a really scintillating contest between these two teams. Of course, we know the strength of China. We're seeing them warm up on the floor now. And we're going to take a look at their starting, uh, Lebanon starting five, sorry, in a minute. And it's led by Elias Fadis, Harkul, Batist, and Savagian. So a strong starting five for Lebanon, but they have a lot of work ahead of them, Laurie. They do, and, and you know, certainly China has the speed and the size, but Lebanon, like you mentioned, they just need to come out with a lot of energy. Uh, Rebecca Akal, she certainly it will be a focal point for them, but Ilias, she's been playing college basketball in the U.S. from South Alabama, and, and I think, you know, her size... She's going to be pretty pivotal in what they bring today. You can see Batis on the screen there, just running through their warm-up now, Lebanon. And Batis, one of the strong forces in their side. And you can see their coach on screen there, Jean Jaja. He has a big task on his hands as well, but he'll be backing his side in to, like Laurie said, bring the energy right from the get-go. So, Well, it's a, it's a big jump from the B division to the A division, and, and so it'll take maybe a little bit while for his players to get used to the speed and, and, and what China bring, but um, what a great opportunity for them. And a great opportunity for China to get their campaign off to a brilliant start. They'll be looking to go all the way this campaign, that's for sure. They've come second too many times, probably for their liking. They're getting some last words from their coach. We'll take a look at their lineups very shortly as well to show you who's going to be on the court. So they're starting five, Wang, Young, Li, Pan and Han. Very strong starting five for China there, Laurie, and not, you'd expect nothing less. Oh, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, uh, Men Li and what she can do um, out there. I thought she was sensational in the World Cup, and, and she's such an exciting player to watch. But how about the size and the strength and the ability of Xu Han? And in the absence of Uru, Uru Lee, sorry, who's out injured, she is going to be able to play big minutes and be a strong force. Absolutely. You saw China coach Zhang Wei on the screen. Of course, she coached her team to silver at last year's World Cup in Sydney. So we'll be looking, like I said, to claim that gold medal and take it off Japan, who have won five straight titles. We'll see the Tissot countdown to tip off. We've got just under a minute to go. We're nearly ready for action. Laurie, some quick thoughts from you ahead of the game. What would each coach be saying to their teams right now? Well, I think for China, you know, you certainly you can tell from the team that they have assembled for this, they are serious. And so they are going to want to come out and really make a statement every team that they play and build towards, you know, the pool game and, and, and then the, the final situation. And for Lebanon, again, for them, I think it's about... It's about testing the water, seeing seeing what they can do and, and, and being confident in what they can do. They know they're up against the might of China, but try and stick to what they've, uh, you know, talked about. Um, learn from the experience, learn from the best, but be involved in this game right from the tip-off. That's exactly what they'll plan to do. We saw the result earlier today, Korea and New Zealand. New Zealand getting the job done by two points. Are we set for another thriller here today? Can Lebanon cause a big upset or can China get their campaign off to the perfect start and make a statement in this 2023 Asia Cup tournament here in Sydney, Australia. You can see the Chinese players heading onto the court now, ready for a big battle. They'll be looking to stamp their authority from the start and equally Lebanon. They have no choice. They just have to come out firing from the start. feel like things are just building in this it always does when you you know again these players they've come a long way to this tournament and and to to play at the FIBA Women's Asia Cup is is something that all players want to be involved in and and so they would be probably all feeling a little bit of nerves like we you know said previously and uh gets get this tip off underway 
Welcome to the 2023 FIBA Women's Asia Cup in Sydney, Australia. It's China up against Lebanon, our second game of day one. And it's China who win the tip. And Wang will head straight to the rack and give it to Han, who gets an early bucket for her team. So a great start for China. What can Lebanon do to respond? It's their captain, Harkel. Elias with ball in hand now. Just looking for an option. Finds her skipper. Gets rejected to start off. But they'll get another go from the baseline. I, I liked what they were doing there. The poise that Lebanon on kicking that ball. But, but boy, the intensity of China. Here comes Lebanon now looking to respond through Savajan. Intercepted there by Pan. And now Wang just loses the ball. So good defensive pressure there from Lebanon and they can try and get their first basket of the day through Savajan. Doesn't quite go in, but Elias is there and can get Lebanon their first bucket in the 2023 FIBA Women's Asia Cup. I like how Lebanon just you know, went right at them. They're, they're not scared and they've got to play like that. They can't be timid. Lee. They try to get a difficult shot up. Hans there, of course she is. Four points for her already. Well, that's the beauty of having somebody the size of, of Han out there is that you can shoot the shot and if you miss it, you know you've got somebody there to clean up the boards. So a great start from China early on, Lebanon keeping with them. Four points to two. A big crowd piled in for this big clash. So a great crowd earlier on for the game between Korea and New Zealand. Japan up next, so equally another great crowd there you'd expect. Here's Pan to Wong. That one floats into the hands of Harkul, who's off and running, wants baddest, doesn't get her. China ball. I think for Lebanon, what they have to make sure they do is, is try and get a, a reasonably good shot every single time down the floor. So they have to try and, and I say try because they're up against China, but, but limit their turnovers. Just make sure they're, whether they go in or not, but let's try and make sure we have a good look at the basket. Han into Han. Gets her own rebound. Can't get the putback bucket and Harkel again, getting lots of rebounds early on. She's been everywhere for Lebanon so far. Similar to her Asia Cup campaign in wow. Jordan. Goes all the way and gets fouled. That's a great drive by the Lebanon captain. It was, it looked like she was driving right into traffic and then a little inside out move here. A little shimmy, we can see that. Whoa, inside out. And nice take to the basket, drawing that foul. And that's the way they need to play. They, they need to push the ball, but not out of, you know, still be in control. So Rebecca Harkel gets the first free throw in. The 2021 Asia Cup Division B MVP, averaging 19 and a half points per game. She looks like she could continue that trend the way she's going, although misses the second one. Baddest. Gets it back to Harkel. Shot clock ticking down. Batis needs to get to the rim and finds Elias with a beautiful pass. Great drive and a little pocket pass inside. So Wong now to Young. Now Lee. And it just goes over her head. So Lebanon applying the pressure right from the get go. Exactly what they needed to do. See a great find here by Battis to a fellow big Elias for a crucial Lebanon bucket. Harkul. Sevajan. Battis back to Harkul. Really sharing the ball around here, Lebanon. Using up all the shot clock time, but Hans there to reject it. You just can't shoot on top of her. You well, cannot. She did a great job on that dribble penetration. She maintained her space and then was able to use her long, long reach to reject that shot. So Han already having a big impact for China. What can Lebanon do with this offensive set? Batist dancing around Pan. 
Can't find the bottom of the net. And Lee is there to mop up for China. Mong Lee thinks about it, pulls up. Can't drain it. A great rebound from Young. Gives it to Wong and banks it home. That's a real challenge for Lebanon. They've got to make sure they're trying desperately to, to block out because if you give China second chance opportunities, they're going to score. Faris now. Elias, pull up, drains it. So a positive start from Elias and, and Lebanon in particular. But China looking to respond here. Down by points. Han all on her own. Pulls up from three-point range. Battis with the rebound. Streaming down the floor. Harkel. Elias. Back to Harkel. Finds Faris wow. who finds Battis. And Great. a beautiful bucket. Great teamwork. And that's what we were talking about at the beginning. If they have any chance of, of causing an upset here, then they need to do it by committee, need to play together. And that was a perfect example. Wang now to Young. Back to Wang. They're really pulling up from three. They just can't find that bottom of the net that they've been wanting. So Lebanon nine, China six. Well, China shot at 39% at the World Cup just nine months ago shooting 23s per, per game, putting that many up. So, you know, they'll be they'll be banking themselves, backing themselves to hit those threes. Han, Young, all on her own. That's as easy as you like. Batis to Harkel. Crowd comes to a hush. One point in the early doors. Sevajan with speed down the lane, can't bank it in, but Elias is there once again and will go to the line for two. She's made a positive start, Zena Elias. She has, she looks pretty confident out there. She's, you know, she, she's rebounding, she's taking it to them, second chance opportunities. 23, year old, 23 years old. Gets the first free throw to go. Average just a touch over 10 points in the last Asia Cup campaign for Lebanon. My apologies, I'll make that three points, but still. She's making a mark in this tournament. Lee to Han. Han. Guarded heavily by Batis, finds Lee. And this time China will head to the line for two. It's in the capable hands of Mong Lee. Mong Lee did a good job of, of catching that ball. As she was cutting through the key, Lebanon were really bumping her and being physical with her, and, and she caught it, was really strong. That's one of the things that impresses me so much about Mong Lee is she's, her strength and her ability to, to play under physicality. She gets her first, her first free throw to go. And the second one is good as well. Harkel now for Lebanon. She's been instrumental to start this game. Finds Elias. Who drains another bucket. A little bit of a smile on her face when she made that basket. Little lefty, she's shooting at high, high arc to get over the long reach of Han, but hasn't she been successful? So a timeout called, Lebanon 13, leading China 10. And Elias has got herself up to a fantastic start. Let's listen to the timeout.
So China all of a sudden find themselves on the back foot a little bit. They've got 10 points, but so does Zena Elias for Lebanon. So one player has scored the same as the whole team of China. Well, you look at the you look at the demeanor of coach Wei Yong uh, on the sideline, and I don't think she was that happy in her timeout. And, and I think it was just refocus her players, get them on track, what they need to do, and, and the defense that they need to play. Let's see what they've got here to respond out of the timeout. Han to Young. Now Lee to Mong Lee. And Baptist again finds herself under the rim. Hakul. Where's the magic woman? Elias finds her. Dumps it into Baptist. It goes through her legs. Hans there for the hustle. And now Lee can move it up the floor. Some fancy footwork gets it to Han. Never in doubt. Harkle. Trying to find a way past Young. Eventually does and banks that one in. Well executed, Lebanon. That was a very set play. They set some good screens. Wide open for that shot. So Yuan Lee to Young. Pulls up and knocks that one down. I don't even think the net moved when she shot that shot. Such incredible shooting motions from the Chinese team. But equally so, Lebanon taking it right up to them, leading 15 to 14. Sevajon trapped in a corner, gets it back up the top to Batist. And again, just loses the ball. There was just a little bit of a push in that case by Batiste when, when uh, uh, she lost the ball and they maintained it. Just a little bit of a push. So Lebanon up by a point here in Sydney. You can hear the crowd in the background chanting. Lebanon have got so much support in the house. And now China responding in their way. It's great to see two passionate nations it is the support that they show and, and the, you know, the players feed off that as well. It's, it's so great to have this support. A personal foul for a potential upgrade for an any time of the game. We can have the main camera uh, full sport. So we're going to add the action will be in the QA. Do we have an available camera from the opposite side? Oh, we'll play this through. So ball, turnover. We'll grab off the leg. That action for me needs criteria one. So in the sense of, yeah, playing at the opponent. Yes. Okay. So the shooter is number seven. Okay. Yes. And we got four third. Uh, Let's go small like palm. Two one. Okay, just one second. Can we have a look at the clock, please? Uh, can we have a zoom out um, of this so we can see the clock when the whistle goes, please, broadcast? Referee, look here. Over to your attention to the screen. You can see the same vision. The whistle there. So 253 is correct? Yep. Okay, so I'm confirming we have an, an unsportsmanlike foul on red 14. White 7 will have two shots with 2.53 on the clock. Yes. Cool. Thank you. So you hear the verdict there from referee Jackie Dover. 
called an unsportsmanlike foul against Trinity Baptist for Lebanon. So China will get two free throws, and it'll be Li Wei Young to take it. So already a bit of action in this game. We've had Lebanon come out firing and give China a bit of a shock, and now an unsportsmanlike foul. And I think that that I mean I think they had to call that unsportsmanlike foul, but in in the. In, in the context of the game, she was really just trying to, to, to go for the ball. There was nothing untoward about it, but, but you have to call that. So Young missed the first free throw. Doesn't make the same mistake on the second. China ball from the sideline now. Scores level. They'll be hoping to take the lead with this possession. Yuan Li to Mong Li. Pulls up, drains that one. Mong Li already making an impact on this game. And the crowd's starting to get into it. China ball once again. Li. To Pan, back to Lee. Throws in on the left. And that's a nice finish by Lee. So both Yuan Lee and Mong Lee making an impact. Mokdad onto the floor for Lebanon. Baptist. Elias. Trying to spin around the China defense, but they were too good on this occasion. Young. Lee to Mong Lee. Wants some players to come out of her. Finds Pan to Han. This time can't get the offensive rebound. And Harkel streaming down the floor. Pulls up. Can't bank it in. Batis there for the boards. And then those are the ones that you can't afford to miss. Great second effort, but just need to put those in. Mong Lee to the roar of the crowd. Pops in a great bucket for China. Timeout called. China now on the front foot, 21 to 15. A minute 35 left in this first term. We're going to go into the timeouts very shortly and listen to Lebanon coach Georges Jaja. So the last words there from Coach Zha Zha, we're not being physical enough. They came out with some great intent in the opening minutes and China have just brought it right back, Laurie. Well, I think that's exactly right. They need to they need to bump cutters. They need to be active on the ball. They need to, to be physical. You can't just let China do what they want to do. And, and so far, Lebanon have been pretty good, I must say. But China just, uh, yeah, just we know how fast they can explode on the scoring front. We see Han take a seat for China. So perhaps a chance for Lebanon to attack now. Haku. Just getting stuck. And it'll be a Lebanon ball. So just in that timeout for your reference, we had a small correction in the scores. It's China 20 leading Lebanon 15, not China 21. So a five-point lead. 
for China. Let's see if Lebanon can cut back that deficit. Mokdad. A nice pass out to Harkul, finds herself some space nice. and a three-pointer to I go with it. I love it when a player dribbles out, has a look where her feet are, makes sure she's behind that three-point line and nailed it. So young now for China. Yu Tong on for her first minutes of the game. Mong Li driving baseline. Getting the pass back out to Young. Travel is the call. Great defensive pressure again there from Lebanon. Not often do you see that call, but she knew straight away, uh, Young, that she had traveled. G gave the thumbs up to the referee, which you don't see that often. Harkel spinning around Lee. Un got under a minute left to try and take back this lead, Lebanon. Batist pulls up from the elbow. That one just rattles out. Lee off and running. Is that signature pace for China? Cut back out to Young. Who responds with a Chinese three? Lee Wei Young making it rain. Here in Sydney. 10 seconds left now, or just under 10 seconds now for Lebanon. Harkul just puts up a prayer. Oh, oh my goodness! Rebecca Harkul points to her head. It's all about mindset here for Lebanon. They are right in this game. And at the end of the first term, we have an incredible scoreline. China 23, leading Lebanon 21. Well, I'm not sure we would have picked that, Julie, at the start of the game, a two-point game at quarter time. But that's the beauty of, of, of our game. And if you look at the stats there, Lebanon shooting the ball at 46%, China 69%. What a high quality game. And China only one from six from that three-point line. That's something we know that they can improve on. So we're looking at the best plays from the first quarter. And really, Lebanon came out on the attack, Laurie, and China were able to get spurts back into the game, but Lebanon look on the front foot right now. They certainly did, and, and I like the mentality that came they came out with. They were looking to attack. Didn't matter who they were attacking, they made some really good decisions, especially on, on the back of um, Akul and the way she was playing. But certainly Ilias, wow, she, some, some rainbow shots from her, but China, you know, we're always going to push the ball and look at their shots out there. And with the height of Shuhan, of course, offensive rebounding. If you miss a shot, there's somebody great there to clean up the boards, and that's exactly what they did. So China, they got themselves back into the game slightly. Young Li Wei leading the way for them with eight points. Shuhan got herself up to a good start with six, but from there, Lebanon just took over. You saw that shot right at the end of the first term from Rebecca Harkel. She dominated for Lebanon. And if you scan the QR code on your screen, you can see all the latest news and highlights, everything you need to keep up with the Asia Cup on the Courtside 1891 app. Download it on the App Store, get it on Google Play. It's the must-have app at the moment. You've got to keep up with this tournament. It already looks like it's going to be quite crazy. We saw the upset, or well, not really an upset in the early game, but a close game between Korea and New Zealand. And now Lebanon taking it right up to China. Tipping off the second quarter here and the FIBA Women's Asia Cup in Sydney. China 23 leading Lebanon 21. Harkel, Bajos onto the floor for her first minutes. Just gets tangled baseline and we get the foul call. Good ball movement by, by Lebanon and, and a combination of, of dribble penetration, looking for their outside shooters, but, but really controlling the ball. So China making an early sub here. Pan coming off the floor and we'll have Song Gao coming on. Lebanon looking for an option. They find Mokdad. Harkul. Gao there for the rebound. To Wan Lee. 
Lee just trying to step around Elias and find some space. And that's what she can do with that space. Such a nice release she has. Good read of where her defense was. Now let's see what Lebanon can do. Harkel thought about the three. Mokdad instead will get to work. Elias, she's been everywhere for Lebanon, but this time three Young steals break. it away to Mong Lee. Oh, the putback wasn't completed, but Wan Lee, great rebound. And China can reset. Lee, go for her first points of the game. Instant impact. Nice poise by Li Mong just or Mong Li just to, to you know assess the situation, not panic. Saw her player cut to the free throw line. Easy find. Elias Mokdad. Trying to get around Lee. Bahos. Again goes for that baseline drive. Finds Elias for her 12th point of the game. Big time minutes from Zina Elias. Mong Li now for China. To the roar of the crowd. Tong just gets pushed out of the way and Harkel now with some space to stream up the court. Up against a few tall players of China. But she'll back herself from long range. That one just misses. A long range pass for China wow. and go! Completes it. Great running of the floor and great vision by Li Wei Yong. Yong's been one of the pillars for China to start this game. Alias has been the one for Lebanon. So too Harkel. Alias, find some space. Can't find the bucket. Gao to Yong. Li Wei Young gets it back. Chinese crowd getting right behind their team. Yu Tong, not quite. It looks like both teams are going to make some subs. And look who's coming back on for China at Shu Han. And also. Wei Na Jin getting on the floor for her first minutes too. Al Sharif comes on for Lebanon. So a few new faces on the floor. It's a high tempo game. Both teams needing some fresh legs. But Mong Li just read it better on that occasion. Han back to Lee. Oh, great job. Beautiful find to go. Such a good find, and that was just about reading your defense. They expected them to pop out, and she just a nice little backdoor cut and a great find by Limong. El Sharif now for Lebanon. Bajos. Goes right. Just puts up a shot. That one misses. And now China really running with some tempo now. Mong Li takes it all the way and one! the China fans say, count that! Well, that was a great drive by Li Mong, and because the defense was back, but they had their heads completely turned, and she saw the driving lane wide open, nobody watching the ball. It's able to finish, it's able to finish strongly. So Mong Li had a ripping World Cup tournament, 16 points per game as an average, mind you. Pops in the M1. She gets herself up to eight points in this game. Lebanon just finding it hard to penetrate China's defense at the moment. What can they do here? Harkel. Batist. Dishes it out to Al Sharif. That one's short. And Mong Li once again, she's the woman of the moment. To Wang, back on the floor. Mokdad, strong hands. Harkel. The screen was a bit too tough from Al Sharif. So 
So another sub here for China. Mong Li coming off the floor, and what an impact she's had so far, Laurie. She has, and she's done it at both ends of the court. She's been a real leader out there in what she's been doing. So Wong to Jin. Now Han, great play. You might say a little bit of a mismatch in there. They made use of it there, China. And we'll have another timeout. China 36, leading Lebanon 23. We're going to go down to the China huddle and have a listen in to what they've got to say. So a very positive Lebanese huddle despite being on the end of a 9-0 run from China. But Coach Jaja has got some really positive communication with his team. Well, I, uh, you know, was able to watch their training yesterday and I thought that exact same thing. He, he's very succinct with his messages but very positive with them too and i think you have to be in these situations you are playing the number two ranked team in the world and they're taking it right up to them just falling apart a bit this second quarter but you can see that china's come out in a, a, a two three zone now battis wants to exploit that zone but han off to wang Jin, can she get involved in this game? Han, great feed again to Gao, always in the right spots, but this time El Sharif cleans up the mess. Harkel. El Sharif. Living on taking their time in offense. Mokdad. Shot clock ticks down. Mokda just has to put it up. And China now with their pace. Move it up the floor. Jin Luo brings it back in the court. Wang. Jin. Han again on that mismatch against Al Sharif. Doesn't capitalize on it though. And Rebecca Harkel just calling for some calm. Four minutes left to play in this opening half. Baptist. Lebanon desperately needing a bucket. They're not going to get it there. Wang. That was a nice look, though. I like that. But again, Speaking of nice looks. Nice looks. Defensively, Lebanon have to, they're back, but they're just not aware of the players and the ball. They need to talk to each other a little bit more. At least make it a little bit more difficult for China to score. So Lebanon looking to break the drought. 11-0 now for China. Batist up against Han. A difficult task. And that's why Han always just getting in the way. Point three on the shot clock. It's really going to just be an inbound and get it in the air. Harkle to inbound. Who's their target? Elias. Didn't turn fast enough. China ball. And a sub here for Lebanon. Baptist is going to come off. And we have Leila Farris coming on. Wiener Jin from the sideline to Wong. Lebanon in his own defense. See if they can slow down the scoring output that is China. Whoa, from three-point range, that one just rattles out. 
And Jin gets the unwanted touch. You know that China is going to shoot that three-point shot, so if you're going to gamble and play a zone against them, you have to make sure, as they did that time, that they block out and don't allow them any offensive rebounds. So Lebanon, only two points in this quarter. Can they add to their tally? Mokda just loses it. Great sliding dive to save it. Gets it back now over the outstretched arms of Han. Miramar Mokdad making herself known. Here's Luo. Instant response. You just know China are never far. Well, a good inside outside, you know, kick with, with Han being that presence inside and then a plethora of shooters outside. Mokdad, can she go for back to back buckets? Pulls up for a long two this time. It's Gauss for China. Wang. Just over two minutes left in this opening half. It's been very entertaining. Gao. Han. Couldn't quite collect the rebound. Harkul now. Gets around Wang. And then Han. And then Bucket. And that's why she was MVP of the Division B Asia Cup a couple of years ago, just putting on a show. Luo. Oh, intercepted there by the woman we were just speaking about. Harkel, back to back buckets, and one! She is literally putting this Lebanon team on her back and saying, come with me. Lebanon flags out and about in the crowd, getting right behind their team. They've come from 11 0 run down. 41 to 30, the scoreline now. Rebecca Hark of back to back buckets. We had that three from Mokdad as well to get them right back, get them the momentum right back. And with a minute and a half to play, they can take some momentum into halftime as well. Absolutely. And, and you know, that's, they're, they're trying a zone. They're trying something a little bit different. It worked, you know, one time a three-point shot went in, another time they got the block out. So, you know, they'll keep with that, I think. And Harkel just misses the end one. Wang now. You can hear the chant of defense, the Lebanese crowd getting Right around their team, but China through Jin. And the boards somehow come back to China through all those hands. Young. Wang all in her own from the corner. Han. Young. Jin. Back out to Wang, and now Young. This is great ball movement. Wow. Lebanon ball. <laughs> we all held our breath just oh, waiting for the call. Did. That was perseverance. I mean, China are doing a great job of crashing the boards, and, and Lebanon just don't have the height, but they're hanging in there. Another stop of the zone. Under a minute left, Mokdad. Just loses the ball, and... Mokdad was stuck in the backcourt for too long. So both teams have turned up the heat in the last few minutes. China were leading by as much as 15. Their lead now 11. Bajos. Harkul. Can she cut the lead to single digits? Mokdad. Harkul. Gets around the screen. Shot clock down to single digits. Elias. Tapped out of her hand. They've got 3.8 seconds to work with from this inbound. It's really important they get a, a good, if they can, look, because there's only 11 seconds left in the, in the quarter, and so you don't want China getting a rebound and um, running it back down. Mokdad again, 
has to just put up a prayer. And now China can have the last say on this opening half. It's actually not such a bad result. I know you never want an air ball, but it did go out of bounds and it gives at least Lebanon a chance to set up their defense at the other end and try and stop this getting a, a, a shot off of this with three seconds to go. Young. That shot won't count. But China, they turned up the heat in that second term after Lebanon came at them in the first term. We've had a riveting opening half here in Sydney. And at halftime, it is China 41 leading Lebanon 30. We're going to take a look at both teams' stats very shortly. It's been a really high tempo, entertaining opening half between the number two ranked nation and the number 44 ranked, na ranked nation. Can you believe it? Well, I think Lebanon would actually, you know, considering 11 points down and you can see the uh, shooting percentage of China, 64%, but only 15% from the three point line. So that's something they'll want to look at. And Lebanon turnovers 12. Like I said, at one point, they need to try and make sure they get a shot every single time down the court. So you can see the top scorers there, Lebanon Harker with 13 points, Elias with 12. Here are the second quarter best plays. And really, Laurie, it was China's quarter. They showed why they're the second ranked team in the world. Well, it was. I mean, it was two points at, at quarter time and, and now they've got an 11 point lead. And I felt like they really upped the ante defensively. They, they really made it difficult for Lebanon to get any good looks, as we can see a block there from, from Han. And, and whilst they were then up in the ante defensively, that gave them the opportunity to run and get some easy transition baskets, with the, which they did. They've got a really even spread of scorers as well, China. Han Shu with eight points, Mong Li with eight as well, and Song Gao, didn't she make an impact straight off the bench? Eight points, found herself in the right spot under the bucket, so China really flexing their muscles at this point of the game. We're going to take a very quick break now, but don't go anywhere. We've got the second half coming up very soon between China and Lebanon. It is China 41 leading Lebanon 30. Unique character. Unique chemistry. FIFA Basketball World Cup is the peak of the game. It's the toughest competition in the basketball world to win. That is why I will be there. Because when you win for one, you win for all.
first. Eyes in the back, up ahead. <laughs> Yay, no look past to Lee in the corner. Lee making moves wide open. Euro takes it to the ramp. Little fake pass to the inside. Welcome back to the FIBA Women's Asia Cup coverage of the game between China and Lebanon. China 41, leading Lebanon 30. But Rebecca Harkel is the top scorer of the game. 13 points, three from four from two-point range, and has hit two big three-pointers, Laurie Chizik. Hasn't she been fantastic? Well, she has, and, and she's really the, the linchpin of this team, the, the, the general, the um, scorer, the experience. And she's been doing it all. I, I love the way she's playing right now. She's She's leading the team, she's, she's calling the plays out, but making the scores herself and some really impressive ones over China's great defense. She's had to wheel and deal a little bit, uh, going to the basket, shooting some massive threes as well to really keep her team in this game. We see China, they had an even spread of scorers like we mentioned, but we're going to take a look at the game of Li Wei Young. Eight points, two from two, and one from one. So 100% game from Li Wei Young and really leading this team from the front, Laurie. Well, whenever she has the ball in her hands, she's a danger. So she's always at that three point line with her hands ready, with her hands, her feet ready, and, 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 and will let it fly. So she's always dangerous, but what a bullet pass that was to her teammate. So she's not only a scorer, but she's a facilitator as well. And as you mentioned, there are some even scores out there. There's a, you know, a few players have, have eight points. Mong Lee has eight, Gao has eight, Hung has eight. So they're, they're really sharing the ball around. In fact, they have 12 assists already. And for Lebanon, Batis Lee in the way with four rebounds and Faris with the two assists. So they probably improved on the assists. As we know, as Laurie just mentioned, China doing pretty well in that stat category. And you can see the two playmakers for Lebanon getting together and having a chat. Elias and Rebecca Harkel, five from nine from the field. Three rebounds to go with those 13 points as well. She's been crashing the boards. They're obviously a smaller side, Lebanon, but they have shown a lot of heart, especially under the rim. Well, they have. They're really outsized when it comes to, you know, putting up a shot or, or China putting up a shot and them having to rebound and they're, they're trying as best they can to, to block up and come and secure it but you know certainly China's um, got the ascendancy in that but I have to give full credit full marks to Lebanon the way they've come out and approached this game so outscored in that second term 18 points to nine but at one point they were down by 15 had only scored two points from the second term so they certainly have shown that never give up attitude which in Australia we love as well so they're doing very well in Sydney to combat the might of the Chinese team. Well I was trying to you know think before this game when I saw the draw and put myself in Lebanon shoes to say now I, I think in fact it's a good thing you're playing China your first game. 
Um, and I say that because China is strong. You know, there's a chance that they might finish top of the pool if you look at their world ranking. And so this is a great game to test yourself against the world's best and to, to work out some wrinkles and to say, well, we can do this better, um, to then come up against there are other two oppositions in New Zealand and Korea. I I'm not sure if it is or not, but I was trying to put a real positive spin <laughs> on it for them. Well, they definitely come out with a positive attitude, but China also have some, we just saw the stat leaders for them, Han with six rebounds and Lee three assists. So unsurprising to see Shu Han leading the way in rebounds. And we obviously spoke about the impact of Lee Wei Young a bit earlier. Is it time for Lebanon to sort of try and stop a particular player for China or do they sort of keep trying that zone defense, keep trying new things in this second half? I, I think China have too many weapons to focus on one player. If you, you know, try and deny Mong Li the ball, well, there's just so many other players that can take up the slack. Or if you, if you try to deny entry inside to Han and, and you know, there, there's too many three-point shooters. So I think they have to continue what they're doing. Um, I think, uh, you know, that zone, yes, they got some threes up, but they also got some stops out of it as well and, and probably slowed down the input of China just a little bit. They really need to take care of defensive transition. There was a couple of times where China was just able to take it up the court and, and score very easily. Um, whilst Lebanon were back, they weren't really ready to go. So that's something they'll need to take care of. And you can see China really feeling it. We've got players just getting through their warm-up now, and that knee looks like a bit of a problem there. So we'll see if Young can come back into this game. But either way, China, how do you think they'll be feeling? I think we've spoken a lot about how impressed we are by Lebanon, but what would Zhong Wei have said at that halftime? Well, you know, if you run down the score sheet, every single player has hit the court so far, and I think this is a great opportunity to make sure that you do get players to hit the court, look at different combinations, get everybody, get some, you know, run in your legs and, and, and just get out there and, and um, have a bit of fun too. I mean, that's, uh, you always want to make sure that you're enjoying your basketball. And, and I know in that first quarter when it ended up being 23-21, that certainly um, Wei Zhang didn't look like she was having very much fun out there. She's a very serious coach. She's a very experienced coach. She was a, a guard herself. And, and um, you know, she talked about games being physical. And, and regardless of who your opposition is, you've got to be physical. Defense is getting tougher. Um, individual skills are getting better and better. So, you, you know, you really have to be focused all the time. We saw Mong Lee on the screen there for China. We spoke about her World Cup campaign, Laurie. She's potentially a chance for perhaps even MVP of this tournament. I know it's not about individual awards, but she's certainly proved herself as one of the strongest players in the world right now. Yeah, she is, and I, and I, I like the way she approaches the game. It's, it's, you know, she's got the skills to do a lot of things, but she also facilitates for her teammates. She gets it done at the defensive end. She works hard, she runs the floor. Uh, she's a real complete player. And she's got really good size and strength and athleticism. So Lebanon, we know they came out and attacked that opening minutes of the first term. Do, do you think they, they had the capacity to do the same here? Well, I'm sure that's the mentality they'll go in with. I think China made some good adjustments and, and have gone, okay, well, we've got to really <laughs> play a bit better defense than we did when we first started and came out. but. Uh, you know, I'm impressed with Lebanon. You you don't try and take a backward step at all. You, you have to try and have that mentality of, of still attacking. And if you can just take care of the basketball and give yourself the opportunity to, you know, get a good look at the basket as many times as possible and stop then the transition game of China, which we know is absolutely potent. See Zina Elias on screen. Went a bit quiet in that second term. Had 10 points at the end of the opening term and then 12. She's got 12 at the moment. So just two points in that second period. And so. I think that was a, that's a product of not so much her missing shots or not positioning, that all of a sudden China went, hey, we've got a, you know, this is a good player here. We need to pay attention to her and, and lock her up defensively. And there's another player that... Lebanon will have to pay attention to Shu Han. She's been electric for China. Average 12 points per game at the 2022 World Cup. 
And you can look at all those stats from the World Cup and this Asia Cup by scanning the QR code on your screen right now to access the Courtside 1891 app. It's your one-stop shop sorry, for streams, schedules and scores. A lot of S words, but a lot of stuff in that app, so make sure you download it. So just confirming a little adjustment in the scores there. It's China 42 leading Lebanon 30. We previously said it was 41-30, but the scores have been corrected to give China a 12-point advantage as we head into the second half. So China begin the third period in the second half here in Sydney. Leading 42 to 30. And Lemonon are back in man to man to start this quarter. And here's Lee Wei Young. This time Elias cuts it off. So the man to man worked in their favor in that circumstance. Harkel. Could she get Lebanon off to a good start in the second half? Finds Elias. Sevajan. Out to Faris. Elias pulls down the strong boards. And they'll have another go from the baseline. That was good execution by Lebanon that time. It got through hands. It got the China defense into a little bit of rotation. And they got a nice look. Baptist. To Harkel. Baptist trying to get free instead. Elias is found. Sevajon. I think um, she had a little bit more time than she shot, thought to shoot that. Oh, and on the other end, trying to make you pay. They do, and that's just that miscommunication. I talked about that at halftime. They just can't afford that. You've got to get back on defense and be aware of where the ball is, where the players are, and not just be looking at a player that you're defending. Huckle. Finding it tough to get past Young. Eventually fires a lane. Could he get the rebound? And Lee Wei Young goes to Bog Lee. Fires Pan. Could get back to back buckets here instead. Feeds Han. Who could it put it in? Seven Jean Lea. To Haku. Lebanon looking for their first points of the second half. Baptist can't get them. Lee off and running. Wog elects to reset instead of going for three. Mog Lee, though, goes for three. And that one rattles out. Sevajon really pushing the pace to start this third period. Yog with the good hands Ooh. and then. Huckle hits the deck hard. Really dangerous pass when she drove in there, had nowhere to go and just sort of flicked it in the air. Both teams putting it all on the line. Can see a big bump there from Young. And that's the pass you were talking about, Laurie. A bit of danger there. Mm. Wong. A good dish into Han, and one. Great high-low action. They had a look from the wing to see if they could get it into Han. Angle wasn't right, so they switched to the top of the key, straight in, high-low, really good. Han just towers over her opponents. Coming in at six foot nine for this tournament. We know the impact she had at the World Cup, but 
She was equally good at the 2021 edition of the Asia Cup in Jordan. 13 points per game, six and a half rebounds as well. And she gets the end one to go. Parkle. Guided by Lee on the floor for the first time this second half. Harkel just loses the ball momentarily. Sevajan there to help. Shot clock ticks down to one second. Faris is just going to put up a shot. And China can get going up their end. Gao, oh, we know the impact she had. Han! Again, heading to the line. She's starting to cause some real trouble for that Lebanese defense. Well, China are doing a good job, as we would expect, of making something happen in transition. So again, in that play phase, the ball got kicked ahead. Han went inside because the defense wasn't quite set. And, you know, when everybody's still moving and finding their players in that, that's when you can really um, have the most of, uh, effect. So as you can see, Han, 12 points for the game, just like that. Eight rebounds, so on the verge of a double-double. And she's really stamping her authority in this second half. She's going to come off for a quick spell now, but she's certainly done her job to give China a handy 49-30 to 30 lead. Tong Yu comes onto the court. Harkul. Spinning around Wan Lee. Sevajon, Batist. Great denial defense there. That was elite defense from China. They, they were denying the ball. They were putting pressure on the ball. They weren't letting any back cuts happen. The deflection it ended up and falling into their hands. That is elite. That is the way they need to play throughout this tournament. It's the biggest lead of the game here for China. 19 points the margin. Falling back into a zone. Lee to Mong Lee. And now Tang. Again, China head to the line. So Lebanon just not so much falling apart with the defense, but now it's just struggling a bit with the height and might of China. Well, well, China, uh, and in this example, um, Yu Tong, she, she made such good position, such good front position. It's really difficult to then get around. And her players are seeing her and, and, and getting the ball to her. And so that time, Elias got caught behind and, and has for a few times. So they've, they've got to try and rectify that. But to China's credit, they're making position and they're finding her. Hung able to put both free throws in. Lebanon desperately need a basket. Well, yes, they haven't scored yet in this quarter. Harkel. What could she do to change her team's fortune? Sevajan. Batist. Going to work out there. Farris. Just finding a way to put a shot up, but didn't work. You can see points this quarter, China 9, Lebanon 0. I'd like to see a little bit more from Batist. I, I think she is so athletic. She's quick. And, and even if she gets by that first line of defenders, pull up then. You know, don't necessarily go in where the, you know, chances are you're going to be blocked. But she has a nice looking shot. Um, and, you know, that's something that uh, I, I think they could utilize maybe a little bit more. Of course, as she goes to the bench and sits down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Mokdad can do in her place. Bajos on the floor as well for Lebanon. But Wan Li. They get it into Tong. That one just falls out. And Harkel. She's been fighting hard all game. Still can't find a way around the China defense. Eventually sets her feet. That one won't work. Mong Lee with such pace. Mong Lee now. Beautiful looking shot, but just fell out. 
China ball once again. Did just you see the look on Yuan Li's face as she was bringing the ball up the floor? She was just probing and looking and seeing where her teammates were. Gao from long range drains it. She's been really good, Gao, off the bench and the, the shots that she's bringing and uh, the confidence that she's playing with. 11 points you just saw there for Gao, but timeout call. China 54 leading Lebanon 30, just about to tick into the halfway mark of the third quarter. Let's take a listen into the timeout. So Coach George Jaja with some messages in his timeout, hoping for a response from his team. They have not scored this quarter. Down 16 to 6 in assists as we saw in that graphic and a 14 turnovers to China, China's 6. So they're starting to find themselves on the back foot, but that woman on screen, you think, Laurie, is the key to them getting back into this one. Well, I don't think she's been subbed off yet. She's uh, played a lot of minutes, but um, she certainly is the key to this Lebanon group. Mokdad, back to her captain, Elias. So again, out of a timeout, China's come out into a zone. Mokdad thought about it. Nice pass, nice little no-look pass. Good penetration and great cutting off the ball. Bajos. And they desperately needed that bucket, Lebanon. Perfect response from a timeout. Tong just rises above the defense, but that one won't fall in. Harkel. Mokdad. Elias. Bajos, can she go for back-to-back -back baskets? Not quite. And Lee he was calling for it very early on. Now Mong Lee loves this spot and that is why! How pure did that shot look, Julia? It was right in front of where we are sitting and it was never in doubt. Such a great release, such great technique. What can Lebanon do to respond? Crowd comes to a bit of a hush now. Mokdad. Shot clock ticking down. I don't think they're aware of it. Just didn't have the communication there, Lebanon. But I tell you what, China firing on all cylinders. Look at this three-point shot from Mong Lee. That release, just, like you said, Laurie, so pure. It just so relaxed when she's shooting. She, she looks like she's really enjoying her basketball. And that's so important um, throughout this tournament. Mong Lee, much involved in this game. Can she go again? This time passes it off. Now Young into Gao. And Harkel can get going down the other end. And trailing 32 to 57, Lebanon. Can't let this game get away from them. Getting around the much bigger Yu Tong out to Faris. Might have just stepped out of court. I think Actually, it's, it's a foul. foul. Yeah, yeah, it's a foul on Mong Lee where she knew she did it, but it was sort of like, oh, really? I found they're quite an honest team, China. All the calls against them, they're sort of congratulating the refs in a way. It's, it's very good sportsmanship, that's for sure. 
Mokdad now to inbound for Lebanon. Fayad, haven't seen her much this game. Mokdad wants someone to come at her. She's got three seconds to work with on the shot clock. Elias loses it, just has to put up a shot. And again, the China defense comes up strong. Well, there's just been so many times where the, the shot clock has been ticking right down and Lebanon are really just forced to throw something up. So if that's the case, that they probably need a little bit more urgency in their cutting and what they're doing. Having said that, that's tough against this, you know, number two ranked team in China. Lee makes it rain. And that's another piece of the puzzle, why they're right up there. A three from Wong Lee, a three from Wan Lee. It's just raining threes from Lee. Got to say it. <laughs> Mokdan now. Elias. Mokdan again. She's been working hard throughout the game for Lebanon. Again, that shot clock ticks down. And again, the shot misses. Well, uh, China are doing a great job of, of keeping their player in front on penetration. Mong Lee just flying down the floor. You do not want a player of her caliber coming at you. And we're going to get some subs for both teams. Al Sharif, the experienced head on the floor now for Lebanon. Mong Lee takes a seat. What a game she's had. 12 points, 4 from 10 from the field. Absolutely killing it out there. Five assists as well, which has been a trademark of China's game so far. Mokdad. Bounce pass to Al Sharif. Probably wasn't the right method of shot there. Lee. Wow. Oh, Jin, that is great passage of play from China. Yuan Lin Lee, I give full credit for. She was she plays at such pace, but she can make her decisions at that pace as well and execute that pass to her teammate. Just like that, China out to a 30-point lead. They've only let Lebanon score two points in this third period. And Gao reaching in. Again, we've heard that shot clock buzzer a few times this third period, and we've got just under a minute to go. China hoping to extend their 30-point margin. And they do that with some great passes, and Tong finishes off the good work. And that's just a well-drilled team playing against that zone, knowing exactly where they should go. Oh, almost got her pocket picked. Bajos back to Mokdad, a chance for redemption here. Faris. Bajos. Again, they've just got to put it up. And China still moving with intent. 16 seconds left in this third period, and now they realize they can slow it down. Shot clock off. Lee. Gao from the top of the three-point line. China managed to keep it in, and it was all dominated by China in that third period, outscoring Lebanon 22 to 2 to open up a very handy buffer. At the end of the third quarter, it's China 64, leading Lebanon 32. You see some stats come up on your screen very shortly, Laurie, and, and what do you make of the dominance of China? Oh, well, look at their, their, their stat line there. 59% they're shooting, 90% from the free throw line. They've shot a few more threes now, have risen that percentage up, but it was just a total, total domination by China. And, and that's... You know, that's what happens when, when a team the strength of China plays a team the strength of, of Lebanon, is that Lebanon did a, a great job in that first quarter and even parts of that second quarter to keep the game in intact. In but when a good team, it's really hard to keep them under wraps for a full game. And certainly we saw the whole breadth of what China can do in that third quarter. Not only at the offensive end, but it was at the defensive end where they absolutely excelled uh, and making it really, making life really difficult for Lebanon. And when you have that 
that variation in, in some of the skill level. Like, I, I just was so impressed with China. They weren't giving Lebanon anything. You know, they couldn't have any dribble penetration. They were really keeping their man in front. They couldn't, uh, you know, there was denial. There was uh, deflections. Um, well, we saw how many times the shot clock went off. And as a result, Lebanon, the two points, as we mentioned. Well, the QR code is up on your screen now. It's just disappeared. But either way, go to the App Store, download Courtside 1891 to keep up to date with all the Asia Cup news, all the scores, all the highlights. There'll be plenty of highlights from this game if you're a Chinese fan, that's for sure. Equally, Lebanon had some nice moments starting to fade out of the game now. But China... Let's see what they've got in this last quarter. They've got a really even spread of scorers. Han with 13, Mong Li with 12, and Gao up to 11 points. And then for Lebanon, Harkel leading the way with 13 points. Elias with 12. So fourth quarter underway. China 64 leading Lebanon 32 in this FIBA Women's Asia Cup clash. Harkel. Sevajon tries to find Batist and they just misread each other there. Gao to Lee. Sorry, that was Luo. And Luo gets it back. And now Lee. The passes are so succinct from China. Tung. Jin. Dish to Lee. They're using the shot clock perfectly. But it just couldn't finish off their results. Baseline ball for China, though. Well, what a great opportunity for some players that perhaps don't get as many minutes for China to, to be playing now and, and having an impact on this game. And as you mentioned, so well drilled. They, they execute. They know where. And that extra pass was made that time. Oh! We're going to check if that one counts. No basket is the call from Jackie Dover. He couldn't do much, be much quicker than that <laughs> on that catch and shoot it's situation. Batis now for Lebanon. Harkel gets it back from Bajos. Oh, and the pass just went right over Fayad's head, wasn't even looking. Just those little skill errors building up and starting to hurt Lebanon. China, meanwhile, stepping up their game to new heights with each possession. Jin feeds Tang. You can see Mong Li on the bench enjoying herself. Li Wei Yong equally has had a very good game. And then we pan out and see Xu Han, three big playmakers on all on the bench for China. Let's see what they can do with a lot of their bench players, as Laurie mentioned. Lee fires for three. So it'll be 11 on ball. Harkle now. Crowd silent. Lebanese fans just hoping for some momentum in this game. And Batis will head to the line. See, I don't mind that, and that's what I talked about earlier. You know, she's got the ability to to go one on one, and what I would have liked is her to catch it and, and rip and go straight away rather than letting the defense, uh, you know, everybody know that she's going one-on-one, -on -one, but still, nevertheless, she finds herself at the line now, and she's got a nice shot. So, you know, she's she's with this team. She's a naturalized American. She's played all over the world, at Russia, New Zealand, Romania, Mexico. Um, and so I think she can insert, exert herself a little bit more on these games. So another free throw to come for Trinity Batist. Lebanon haven't been to the free throw line that much this game. She pops that shot in. So in a positive side, Lebanon have scored. And drawn first blood in this fourth quarter. 
Well, I like how they extended their defense. Foul shot, they extended their defense out. Jin pulls the trigger. And Harkle just busting through. And now up against a taller opponent, as has been the case for Lebanon. A good pass there from Bajos, but Fayad couldn't handle it. It was the right idea, you know, there was a bit of a mismatch in there. She got the ball in the air, just couldn't secure it. So Jin heading off the floor. But you can see China. this extended defense again by Lebanon. And you know, I like that. Try something different. And here's Young. He's dealing with a bit of a knee complaint at halftime, but back out onto the floor. Luo, Lee. Gets it back. Dishes it into Tung. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. So the tempo certainly slowed down from both teams. Harkel. Trying to get around Luo. Bajos. Into Fayad. Just got stripped from her. Again, they're just trying to, to look at that mis mismatch with Yuan Li. So Fayad at the line now for Lebanon. That first one rattles in. It is each closer point by point. That's her first point of the game as well. So a few for Lebanon that haven't quite had the scoring output as you'd imagine with a scoreline like this, but they've certainly showed a lot of heart, a lot of effort. So Ru Zhong onto the court. Haven't seen much of her in this game, if, if at all. Lee into Gao, banks it in. Got really great positioning, Gao. Always finds herself in some really good spots. Well, really read the back of the zone well as to where to pop in and uh, receive that ball. Harkul for three. The three point shooting has just been off the mark. Young flying up the court. Tongue's there to help out. Couldn't bank it in. Now Battist. So the tempo lifting a bit. Bat is trying to get around two Chinese opponents, but it's the tall timber that wins out. Lee, no look pass to Gao. Their Again, communication is fantastic, isn't it? Yuan Lee is, you know, she's the smallest player on the court. She's, I would have to say, the quickest. And, and the decision making that she is able to do at the speed and pace that she is playing is so impressive. She just goes and she just looks and she has great vision. Here she is again, young. Finding tongue. So that was just a really good use of her body there on that, that pick and roll and, and on the switch, just forcing her defender to stay behind her and then some great high-low action inside. So a big round of applause for Song Gao as she comes off the floor. 15 points, 6 rebounds. So a fantastic game from her if it is, in fact, the last we see. But what an impact. And Lee Yuan also coming off for a much-deserved break. Wang. Tung. A tough drive. And an offensive foul, so good, strong defense there from Battist. Lebanon also have made a few changes. Al Husseini on for her first minutes, as well as Amar Mansour, young 18 year old. Be a thrill for her to be playing in the first um, FIBA Asia Cup. Dishes it off to Battist. It looks like Rebecca Harkle has taken her first seat of the game. Bajos, can she lift her team? Good drive. And she'll find herself at the line. 
Fast forward. Charlie number 11. Ushii. The first. So Ida Bajos. Bajos. Two points for the game so far, but she's had five rebounds, so she has been crashing the boards. There's no question. Uh, you know, you have to give Lebanon credit that that it, it hasn't been a lack of effort. They haven't thrown in the towel. They haven't gone, this is all too hard. They've kept fighting. They've tried throwing some different defenses in. Coach can have a look at that. That might be something, an option they do in another game. So uh, I've still been impressed with the way they've handled themselves. Absolutely, they're drawn in a pretty tough group, but they'll give themselves every chance. They do not want to go back into Division B. They want to prove that they belong up here. Luor for three. That's nothing but net. Van Suolea. The team down 73 to 38. Batist. Bajos. A little reverse, didn't quite work out. Wang, Jung, and now Luo for back-to-back -back threes, you betcha! This is just a little bit like a training drill right now out there. Unfortunately for Lebanon, China are just too good, too strong, too quick. And it just proves how much of a different look team they are without Rebecca Harkel out on the floor. Although Bajos has been doing a lot in her place to try and give her team some fighting spirit. Well, she's going hard to the basket and, and you know, trying to, trying to draw a foul, get herself to the line. And now we'll see some subs here for Lebanon. It's the first minutes of the game for Narine Gokshan. And Trinity Batist will head off the floor. Bajos. Knocks down another free throw. It's been all free throws for Lebanon. No field goals in this final period. But whatever works, as long as you can get numbers on the scoreboard. A big substitute coming on for China. Shu Han. Yu Tang will take a seat. I think you mean. Big as in yeah. big, <laughs> big and big and, as yeah. in big, <laughs> both. Literally and yeah. hypothetically and yeah. theoretically, just big. <laughs> Zhang. Al Husseini for Lebanon now. Gokshan just fell out of her hands. Al Husseini again. And again, they're doing really well, Lebanon, driving hard to the rim and, and making China fight a bit. I'm sure when she drove in there, all she could see would be the long arms of the Chinese player, but she finds herself at the foul line and uh, good for her, Al Husseini. Point guard from the University of Buffalo, 22 year old getting herself in the game. And it looks like we'll just have a bit of a fix up with the clock. So Jackie Dover just running over to check everything's all right. It'll be a baseline ball. It's a good job of the referees to, you know, we're looking at the players and what they're doing, but they're also looking at the clock and the score, and making sure everything on the whole court is under control. A really strong referee panel here in Australia for the Asia Cup. And speaking of strong, there's Han. What a well-executed play. And those are the sorts of things that they can practice right now, if I can say that, uh, against Lebanon. and and the finish, but more about the execution of it, and it was superb. It's a timeout called China 78, leading Lebanon 41. Let's head into the Lebanese timeout.
Coming out of the Lebanese timeout, we're taking a look at some excellent three-point shooting from China in this fourth period. Luo hit two on her own, and they've got a big lead with three minutes and 55 seconds left, 78 to 41. Coach Zhong Wei, well, coaches are never happy, but you sense she's probably smiling inside. <laughs> They're gonna will their way to a big opening day win. And the crowd giving them a big cheer as they continue their ascendancy here in Sydney. Wang, as easy as you like. And again, they nearly got it off Lebanon, but Al Husseini there to mop up. Mansour now. Mokdad. Al Husseini pulls up. Now Wang. Well, while that shot didn't go in, that's exactly what the coach was calling for them to do. So it's it's just a you know that last time out a learning opportunity for everybody in these situations. Young. Mansour pulls down the rebound. She's looked really zippy as soon as she's entered the floor. Mansour. Mokdad, a little dunk pass. Bajos. Trying to get around that Chinese defense. Luo has already hit two threes this quarter. Wanted to feed her teammate and did so successfully. Young. Locked out. Bajos. So this is definitely a bit of a reality check for, for Lebanon. The fact, you know, this is what... This is what the A division is about, the top division, and this is what one of the top teams in the world is about. This is what they need to aspire to. And there's Han, once again. Just so dominant. It's just ticking down to the two minute mark. 84 to 41 is the score line here in Sydney. Al Husseini. Bajos, a great long three. Now a few subs here for China. Han coming back to the bench. 17 points, 10 rebounds, so a double-double confirmed for Han Shu. You expect she'd be getting a lot more numbers like that as the tournament goes on. She's just a mighty force. Luo, Young, shoves Mokdad out of the way, and Mansour, with a minute 30 left, 40 points down, Lebanon, trying to end the game on a high note. The baseline ball here for Lebanon. Bajos has been gallant all game. Could have baked that one in this time. And China still with energy to burn. This time Young got pushed out of the way. It's been a comprehensive performance from the reigning World Cup silver medalist. Lee. And this is a good game for, for China and the, wow, what a nice and shot that world. was, yes. Um, you know, a good game for them to, to, you know, work out any cobwebs, get lots of miles under the legs. Mansua. Kokshan. Mokdad. Just tries to 
curl it in, but instead it heads behind the backboard. It's been a tough opening ask here for Lebanon. But they'll take some hope into the rest of the tournament. They've certainly played with heart and spirit, like we have mentioned. Lee to Young. Pops up the shot. El Husseini now. Just dancing around the China defense and one dribble too many. China looking to have the last say on this game. 19 seconds left. Up next, China takes on New Zealand and Lebanon taking on Korea. So tough opponents really for both teams. You can see in these tournaments, anyone on their day can win. And now the crowd cheering China to an opening day win. Young puts the icing on the cake. Doesn't she ever, just a nice basket to finish the game. And it's been a comprehensive performance from the world ranked second team, China. They complete a comprehensive performance in Sydney. A lot of playmakers on the floor. But it is China, 89, getting the win over Lebanon, 44. So we can see the stats will come up on your screen shortly and we'll have a look to see how the game went. China flexed their muscles at the end of the game, as we know, after Lebanon really took it up to them. In the free throws, they led 90% to 80, two points, 60% to 27, excellent shooting. And then three-point range, it was quite even, 30% to 25. Rebounds, 44 to 34 in the way of China. They dominated assists, 29 to 9. And in the end, Lebanon's turnovers were too much. Han leading the way, as you'd expect, with 17 points. Gao put up a really good game with 15, and Lee with 12, and Rebecca Harkle with 13 points for Lebanon. Well, as you said, Julia, a, a comprehensive win in the end, and... You know, I'm still, I, I thought, what I liked about Lebanon, we'll talk about China in a minute, but what I liked about Lebanon is that they kept going. The coach kept coaching, the players kept playing, whether they were off the bench, whether they wanted their main players. And, you know, they did some good things. Uh, and, and you can't keep a team like China down. So, you know, if we look at some of the highlights there, certainly initially, they were getting some great shots out there. Then I think China just ramped up their defense and didn't allow those looks. And as we saw, the shot clock running down a lot of times. Um, and then China securing the rebound, transition, offensive transition, pushing it up the court and being able to score some easy baskets. And they just had so many contributions across the board. So a massive win for China. We have to talk about them, Laurie, like you said. They just put on, they flex their muscles after the opening term. A bit disappointing from their point of view, but all their star and playmakers come out. And you see in the end, Shu Han with a double-double leading the way. Well, and I just thought they played really well as a team. They looked for each other. They went from perhaps just a, a good shot to an even better shot, a wide open look for their teammate. They had a lot of high-low action, as you would expect with the presence of of Shu Han in the middle there, but just their execution. Uh, I think their coach would be would be pretty happy with that, although I'm not sure coaches are <laughs> always happy with that. But, um, you know, it was a really, really good result for China and got a lot of people involved in the game. Yes, that's right. They had scorers all over the floor. Only Ru Zhang was the only one not to score. So China really sharing the load and putting on their bench players towards the end. Lebanon also did the same to try and get some minutes into their bench players. I thought Alias was really strong with 12 points. And of course, Huckle leading the way with 13. So big challenges coming up across the tournament for both teams, but China, as you'd expect, too dominant. They're making a statement, of course. Up next is Japan up against Chinese Taipei. So they're probably gonna stay back and watch that one and just get a scout on the Japanese players. We know how dominant they are in this tournament, so. It'll be a really interesting battle here in Sydney. And um, what an opening day we've had so far. We'll take a look at the group standings of Group A. You can see China there leading the way. New Zealand also getting the win today. Korea and Lebanon 
rounding out third and fourth spot. You can see New Zealand 66 defeated Korea 64 and 89 was China's score up against Lebanon 44th. So I think that wraps up proceedings here in Sydney. It's been a great opening day in the FIBA Women's Asia Cup. Up next, don't go anywhere, Japan up against Chinese Taipei. Keep it on the courtside 1891 app, wherever you're watching from. Thank you for joining us. It was China 89 getting the job done over Lebanon 44.